Stand by. Action. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Commission of CIPC Advocate Rodifola, I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar on new e-services. My name is Marumo Mudiba. We hope today at CIPC, the webinar will be very much gainful, create more clarity and understanding of our new e-services on our various platforms. Please take note, participants, of the following. Today's webinar will be recorded and will be made available on CIPC website. We will have a questions and answer session after the presentations. Please post your questions on comments function during the presentation. Questions from comments will be answered during the questions and answer session. I humbly remind you that please mute your microphones to prevent background noises. Also switch off your video camera during the webinar as cameras draw attention to this person instead of focusing on the presenter. It also increases the data uses of everyone present and influences the quality of the broadcast. We can go to the program of today. Program of today. Next, next slide for the program, please. Okay. As I've done the introduction, I will be followed as per the program. I will be followed by our Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Dian Nkuna, who will present on the new e-services overview. And next, he will be followed by the name reservations and new companies platforms, which will be represented by Advocate Krista Klo. We will also now have with us uh, Mr. Mabuse Mueti, who will on, on the primary cooperatives platform. And lastly, we are graced by our manager from Revenue Debtors, and Debtors is Mr. Louis Mela, who will present the new cut payment system and discontinuation of the declining balance system. After that, that will be our questions and answer. I thank you. Move to the next slide. CIPC was brought into existence by the Companies Act 2008, and our mandate emanates from Section 185, Subsection 1 of the Companies Act. The Commission is a, a juristic person to function as an organ of state within the public administration, but as an institution outside the public service. Next one. CIPC is responsible for the following acts. Under the Business Reg Corporate Regulation, we administer the Companies Act and its other related acts, the Cooperatives Act and the Close Corporation Act. Under the Intellectual Property Innovation and Creativity, we are the custodians of the following uh, patents domains, patents, designs, trademarks, and copyright. The other one. I'm going to hand over to our Diane Kuna to give us an overview of the new e-services. Thank you. Diane, over to you. Uh, good morning, uh, colleagues um, and um, colleagues both internally and outside the CIPC. My name is Tien Kuna. I am a manager in ICT. So we, as a CIPC, we have implemented, or we are busy implementing, modernizing the services of um, the CIPC. You might have noted, some of you, that there's a new e-services platform, which basically is a new framework that we are advancing. We're migrating legacy systems or systems that existed in old platforms onto that new platform. So at some point in time in the future, that will be the only platform that um, exposes electronic services um, to our clients. So you, the earlier you gain familiarity with 
with the environment, you recommend and suggest to the CIPC how to enhance it, the better. And um, so we're going to talk some more about it. What are the capabilities, the features that are implemented on it? Uh, why do we introduce a new platform? And what does it mean to you, uh, users of services of the CIPC? So when in the introduction, major introductions on the platform, that's the content orientation and service coverage. That's where we're going to learn about the features on the platform. When I talk a little bit about payment, I, since we rolled out the platform, I've um, engaged uh, several users who are um, a little bit um, daunted by the fact that we're providing them with only one payment option. So let's talk about it. And, and uh, so you're educated to what is coming next as payment options on the CIPC platform and feature services. So as in my introduction, um, you know, we don't have to um, innovate because something that you were dependent upon uh, for service delivery is broken. You innovate because there are new possibilities, there are new opportunities and of, that are presented to you of doing things better and uh, improving your efficacy as an organization. That's why we thought as the CIPC, we need to inno innovate, taking advantage of current technological capabilities and also looking uh, realistically at the demands from our user community. Uh, what are the demands telling us and what are the experiences and observations of people operating the CIPC services telling us? So um, we, 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 we started the modernization platform. So this is not solely an internal consideration that seeks to advance the CIPC internally, electronically, but we're looking holistically at what will make uh, the CIPC better in terms of the organization, the CIPC, the organization itself, and the services that we are exposing to our user community. So we also want to integrate better. We know there are a lot of um, uh, disparities currently. For those who have engaged the CIPC from different platforms, from uh, patents um, perspective, IP perspective, and company registration perspective, they should be able to tell the difference. So we want to create a seamless platform uh, that simplifies and enhances the user experience. So we should not feel like you are engaging with different parts of the CIPC when you engage with the CIPC. You should be engaging with one uh, CIPC. Thank you. So what are the major introductions? So currently or on the old on the um, old um, electronic platform you are required when, when logging in to provide us with uh, what you call a customer code that's some code generated by the CIPC and and, and and your password that is well and good but it sort of limits us in a lot of ways um, it, it has served this purpose. So we have uh, seen the limitations of, of using that mechanism. That's why from now onwards, we want our users to log on to the platform, uh, our electronic platform with email addresses. Why do we do that? Because we want to make sure that we are able to reach you when we want to reach you. So if you log in with your email address, you're going to constantly give us the email address that is in use. So we'll be able to communicate better, reaching out to you whenever we, want, we need to uh, reach out to you. Again, it is a modern standard. If you have um, operated other electronic platforms, you, you, you will uh, confirm that email is the, is the sort of adopted standard uh, for gaining access into a, a, an electronic, a computerized platform. And again, um, 
what you're going to see when you log on to the system will force you to update your details we, we want to have the latest details uh, uh, of you and another reason is um, a lot of people have registered um, on the CIPC using a third party and we don't have the details of the of the director or the person who has registered the legal entity but we have the details of the third party uh, again limiting us in terms of communication we don't want to communicate to a third party we want to communicate to you for instance if ever there are opportunities uh, for smmes and therefore we need to be able to target with each smmes from our database and dispatch uh, the communication to them we don't want to go through to them via third parties so that's why we need individual details on the on the cipc database And um, currently, you will be paying on the platform with card. But we'll talk some uh, more about payment. I can start now the conversation. We are adding additional payment options. I know it is um, you got you, We have gotten used to the fact that uh, we operate with credit uh, at the CIPC. I need to uh, load credit before transacting with the CIPC, and it has gotten convenient for most of our users. But it's, it creates problems um, uh, that are, are not known uh, to you. So we are, we are not a financial institution, first and foremost. We want to move away from keeping people uh, money um, and, 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 and also exposing ourselves for various other challenges. That's why we, we want to um, adopt electronic payments and instant payments, meaning we have to pay us when you transact with us. So currently there's card. We are moving on to uh, EFT payments and all the other fancy payments uh, mechanism that you would have used on other um, 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 uh, e-commerce platforms like your Zepa and so on and so forth. So the ultimate goal is for you to do come to the CIPC, start a transaction, and complete it. Uh, if you are not able to complete it, we'll be able to save your details. You can come at a later stage and complete it. So we want to bring that convenience you know, of finishing um, a transaction fast. Or if you start a company registration, you should be able to finish after payment and get your documents. And uh, you should be able to go log on to our platform and download the documents. The documents, by the way, by default, they're emailed to you, but you should be able to also come back to the platform, log, log in and download um, uh, the documents um, of, your, of your company registration or cooperative registration or your name reservation. So the main target here is speed, enabling you to do to transact fast with the CIPC. So the point that I've, I've mentioned in um, when discussing the previous slide is uh, you should be able to, do, that documents are downloadable from the CIPC. We are finalizing a, a document uh, request module that is going to enable you to uh, request documents also of other enterprises, but with payment because uh, CIPC charges for its data. I'm sure we are familiar with that fact. So we are finalizing that into the new platform. We'll be able to request documents at a price though. Yeah, but let's talk uh, payments some more. There's uh, the card payment details uh, that is currently implemented. And it is working strictly for 3d secure cards if you want to understand more about that i suggest you consult your banker or you go to your uh, bank and, and and get some more clarity on what 3d is so we want to limit uh, fraud onto the platform so we are taking cards that are 3d uh, secure so if your card is not 3d secure you can consult with your bank uh, to verify that fact and also to activate 3DS. Because if it's, it's not 3D secure, it's not going to be able to process payment onto the CIPC platform. 
but uh, I foresee over time the three D is going to be the new standard. So all the cards that are coming in the future or payment debit cards will come three uh, D secure. So what we are doing also we because people gotten uh, too familiar with the um, um, balance loading on the CIPC and 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 thereafter transacting. So we want to uh, still maintain a similar service. So we're going to introduce a retail payment service shortly. To be precise, in the next two quarters, uh, in the next six months, it should be um, up and about. So we are we are we are we are sort of uh, seeking a suitable and cost-effective solution that will enable you to pay at any uh, retail shop of your choice. So you can you can reserve a name, get a reference number, and then go to Spa Pick and Pay or whatever, or ever box or check us and pay for 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 that transaction. Similarly, you can do same for company registration, cooperative registration, and so forth. So EFT, of course, is the automatic choice that you're going to also add for those who prefer to to use EFT payments. So the orientation around the system, when you get onto the system, you'll see a menu such as displayed on, on the screen. It's the home, that's where you get to update your profile. And then services, uh, amendments, uh, financials, and authorization. So you might not see amendments and authorization for now, but I'm going to touch on those when we discuss uh, future coming services. So on services, that's where you get all the services that you need. Uh, you're going to get your name reservation service, company registration service, and, and cooperative service, and, uh, and any other service that the CIPC currently provides. As and when we add them onto the new platform, you're going to see them um, in that menu uh, that is highlighted there. Uh, here are the service currently available services you can do name companies cooperatives and you can also uh, view documents by the way so we are busy finalizing that um, document um, module but it is uh, it can be operated to some extent amendments that's why you're going to be doing amendment company amendments director amendments and any other amendments that you currently do at the CIPC um, Financials, that's where you access our shopping cart. When you want to go straight to payment, you go there, get the shopping cart. And there's an invoicing service and annual returns. You're familiar with annual returns. Invoicing, invoicing basically, um, it's a service that we have um, developed for service providers of the CIPC through which they can submit invoices, uh, trying to automate that and, and um, moving within the requirement of uh, paying our service providers in 30 days. So that's going to be, it's meant for people who are doing business with the CIPC. Uh, if you have a contract with the CIPC and you want to submit an invoice, you're gonna go to that option and then submit the invoice for processing. There's authorization. Um, authorization, you're gonna see seating of rights and transact on behalf of. So we spoke of people doing uh, transacting um, against the CIPC using third parties. So we wanted to standardize that uh, because it's, it, we don't want to take away the feature. It could frustrate a whole lot of our users. So, but we wanted to make sure that the, it is done properly. Um, more like the SaaS model, where the agreement between the auditor and the client is made uh, by the two parties uh, in the absence of um, uh, SARS. So here the CIPC provides such a, will provide in the near future such a platform whereby uh, a client engages with the, the, the third party. They agree that, no, I'm handing over my profile so that you transact on my behalf. We don't want, the reason we are doing that is we still are interested in the contact details of the client. Um, and we want to know that the client is transacting uh, through a specific organization or third party. 
So you're going to be able to see your rights to your third party, and the third party can transact on behalf of any of the clients. So that's where these services are coming up, uh, are coming to the fore. Yep, thank you. Um, thank you much. Uh, I'm going to hand over to the um, coordinator. Alma. Alma. Alma, are you there? Alma is on mute. Alma, you're on mute. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Krista Kloka. Um, so welcome to the CIPC officials, our valued customers and stakeholders. So I hope you find this presentation very enlightening this morning as to where we are moving towards. Um, this will be the this is the first uh, section of services that was launched on the new East services. And as the months go by, as Diane indicated, we we will be releasing more of our e services onto this new platform. And they are going to look slightly different than what used to. And we hope that those changes are for the best and improves provides improved data as well as efficiency and processing. So I'm going to dive straight in into names. Next page. Thank you. All right, so as indicated, NAMES is um, one of the first releases that we've done. It's not the full full spectrum of name reservations that was released. It is just one of the first components, what we term uh, standard name reservations. Please note that is not the official legal term. A name reservation is a name reservation. It's just for internal purposes to, due to our sub-processing and, and, and sub-processes that we track and monitor, we just sometimes give it a name for, for usability and understandability. So standard name reservations are basically your name reservations, whereby no supporting documents are required, and it's our standard proposed name. So it does not include our so-called associate name reservations. That is where the name is closely associated to a trademark or another company name or to a government department or contains certain specific wording in terms of which we need to confirm there is a right of use to a name similar to that. It does not include name extensions, defensive name reservations, defensive name extensions or transfer of names. If you want to use those services or those sub name reservation services, please use the other channels that are available. Um, and, but they're all available on e-services and associated name reservations are done via the email address. So these name um, other name reservation sub processes will be released in the next couple of months as we develop them, test them and make sure that they meet uh, all requirements. So in the meantime, um, we will be running all of this, this new e-services as an additional channel to the existing channels that we have. So, for example, on standard name reservations, as most of you may be aware, there's a name standard name reservation option via a banking portal. If you register your company through the banks, there is a name reservation option on our CIPC mobile, our self-service terminals. Uh, and also our e-services. So new e-service will also just run in parallel. And eventually, as we progress, uh, put more and more services onto new e-services, eventually we'll start closing down uh, e-services and um, go into new e-services. And then new e-services will also then, re versions of it will be released on the other existing platforms to make sure that the standardization of all applications and data that's coming through the organization. 
So just a bit of practical information regarding name reservations. Um, before you select a proposed name, and this is for all the platforms, it's not just for new e-services, please do a free trademark search. There's the website. The link of uh, for the trademark search is also available on the new e-services. And also do a general browser search via your Google, Chrome, Firefox, whatever you use. The reason for that is that, as we know, a lot of businesses are moving into the into the web. They don't have physical locations, but they are still valid businesses that run valid business. And you may transgress in terms of other legislation outside of the CIPC, they write to that name of that business. So please do a, uh, do a search. Also, please put in four proposed names. Don't just put one and hope that it comes through. The reason why you do four proposed names is because we bill for the search of the name. If the name is not available, you are still charged for that name reservation. So, so by providing four proposed names, it gives a high op, uh, a probability that a name will be reserved that you've listed, meaning that you're not going to waste your money. Again, there's also no guarantee to the availability of a name when you do a search or submit it on any of our platforms and also new e-services. The name is only approved once it's gone through our search engines and some of them will actually even go to the back office for human intervention in searching. It's only when it has passed all of those, those checks and balances and we issue a notice confirming that the name has been reserved, that the actual name is reserved. Next page, Rizzoni. All right, so what we've done, so you know basically asking why is new e-services e then there? So what we have done is um, the other platforms are built on old legacy uh, systems, and the new version of doing it is much more elegant. It provides more detailed search results and better search capabilities. Also, what this additional service allow is to provide a more accurate indication of things that we call forbidden words, prohibited words, profanity, and proposed names that are already reserved. Um, I'm not going to go into the legalities regarding all of these, but you, there's certain words that give certain indications or has got a certain meaning in the common tongue or common uh, cultural um, culture that may offend or may be regarded as very closely associated with another entity or cultural element. So we are mindful of all of those items and that's why we actually check regarding all of these items. Next slide, Ritoni. Right, as indicated before, when you submit a name reservation via any of our platforms, including new e-services, it's a non-refundable 50 Rand fee. Um, that's why please provide the four, name, uh, four proposed names. Due to the competitiveness of names, people will not believe it, but we literally have people submitting same or similar names literally minutes apart. So therefore, in order to get the name, uh, and please note that we are fully aware that some people register company names just for the sake of, um, well, to be quite honest, sometimes they actually steal each other's companies via these processes. So we are quite mindful of this. So that's why due to the competitive of names, the payment must occur before 12 o'clock the night the application was submitted. The reason for this is, is that your application can only be processed in law once you've made the payment. Payment and the information goes hand in hand. If you just submit the information and there's no payment, it's not a submission for us to consider in terms of the law. So it's very, very important. So also note that and on the new e-services, it's only the card payment system that is allowed. So there is so if you have declining balance, finish up your declining balance on the new e-service uh, on the other platforms that is available. Also, just very important to note um, before we move to the next slide, and it may be repeated on the next slide, is if you're going to use the name reservation for a service that is currently available on new e-services, that is a co-op primary, uh, primary cooperative and a short standard private company, then you use the name reservation option on new e-services. Please do not use any of, of the other platforms and then think it's going to be used or uh, be usable 
on new e-services. Currently, the systems are not that integrated. We are picking up uh, uh, inquiries from customers whereby they've done their name reservation on new e-services and then trying to use it via um, the bank registration or the BIS portal. Currently, it does not work. If you've done your name reservation on new e-services, you need to use it on the new e-services functionalities that can accept a name reservation. Next slide, Rizzoni. Right, as pointed out, the reason why we've done this is to improve the search accuracy and speed of efficiency as part of the name reservation process. And also we have uh, automated a large component of it. And please note that this there is some artificial intelligence in the name reservation system. So the system will pick up anomalies and notify us in order to adjust the search results and criteria from internally, uh, from intern, inter <laughs> internally, my apologies for that. So therefore, because of this automated components, some name reservations that are submitted will be done immediately by the system if it meets certain of the criteria. If it cannot be done by the automated system or it has got trigger words or phrases, it will be referred to the back office and that does take longer. We do get complaints from clients, of, oh, but I submitted a name reservation um, five days ago. The one came out immediately. Why is the other one not done? But please note that name reservations back office don't take five days. It's actually usually about a day. Um, so people do not understand it. So you need to note that some are auto approved and others go to the back office. And then just again, please. If you did a name reservation on new e-services, you could only use it on new e-services at the moment. Ridani, next slide. All right, so we have prepared a frequently asked question that if you want to access uh, regarding how to use name reservations on the, uh, on the platform, as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. All right, and I think that's a wrap from me regarding name reservations. Right. So let's dive into the next component, short standard private company. Um, Rizani, before we move on, maybe just a brief, brief indication. Um, we are picking up a lot of customers don't understand the differentiation between the different companies that we have in law. But I'm not going to go into the uh, long of and short of it. So what the Act provides for in terms of the New Companies Act is one of its benefits. And just by the way, we're actually celebrating this month 10 years of the New Companies Act. So what one of the benefits that was brought into the Companies Act was short standard forms for certain type of company registrations. That means is that if you opt for it, you meet the minimum requirements of the law, right? So if you accept a short standard private company, there's minimum provisions of the law that, that it's met. If you want to go outside of those standard provisions, then you'll do what we call a customized private company or public company registration. Please note that just because it's a short standard and you fill out a, a lot of data onto the website, you still have a memorandum of incorporation, a governance document or constitution in the co-ops terminology. Your MOI is provided to you that sets out the rules of what the Act requires Please read them and refer to them regularly. That is your governance document. That's your constitution. We're getting questions from clients that, oh, what is my governance rules? And so we did provide it to you as part of the system. That's your governance rules. If you want to change it, there's other processes surrounding it. So please do refer it. There is, although it doesn't look that way, you still have rules and accountability and governance structures if you register. Uh, that was the legal lecture from my side, so let's go on to the practical. <laughs> Thank you, Rizzoni. So again, there's a whole bunch of different companies. The first release was a short standard private company. Again, it's the minimum rules what the Act requires. The short standard for not-for-profit without members will be released later. It's currently in development. All right, so one of the big changes in this version of new e-services is that, um, that all the directors that are South African citizens, the system will be fully automated because we validate the information with Home Affairs. If you are, um, so 
registration is also again only completed upon the payment for the services. Our law states that data must be accompanied with payment in order for it to be a legal submission to the CIPC. No payment, no registration, unfortunately. All right. Um, so this, if you take longer to pay for what any of our services that are billable, it is going to delay you in, in us finalizing the transaction and you getting your confirmations. All right, so for any, uh, for any or all directors that are foreign nationals, in this case, because it's a simplification of the process, you will, have, you will be required to upload a certified copy of the passport of each of the foreign directors via the service. It will go to the back office to verify because remember, home affairs don't have a register of a UK national and their identity information with in the UK. So we need to see that your passport is valid, it looks legit, it didn't expire, and it is a certified copy of it. So those will go to the back office. Again, registration is only completed when payment has been received. Then also just to note, if you use the new e-services portal for short standard private company, please don't email us the documents. If you are registered, you are registered. You don't have to upload the documents into, for example, e-services coverage because that is a processing channel. You're just going to duplicate registration information and may cause data corruption on our side. So please, if you use any of our fully automated services, which is currently this portal, SSDs, mobile app, Please don't email the documents to us. Your registration is done and dusted on our site. Right? And also e-services coverage will be out, uh, will be phased out as we move to the new platforms. Um, so this new e-service also allowed for what we term simultaneous name reservation with your new company registration. So you can submit your new company information as well as your name reservation. Please note that your name reservation will have to be finalized first in order for the system to look at your new company information. And if, if that meets the requirements, then the registration will occur. Um, directors is also required to provide their valid electronic contact details before proceeding to the next uh, section of the service. So those that have may have used it, there's little pop-ups to say, Please make sure that this is your correct, correct email address. The reason for this is, is that we are starting to issue all legal communication terms of the Companies Act via email and SMS. We are no longer going to pass, but we are phasing out registered mail on our site. So everything must be done electronically. Also note that directors may not share the same contact details. So you've heard from Diane. So let's say Diane, uh, Maruma, and myself, we start a company. We, you will not, we will not be able to share the same email address as part of our director profile or the cell phone numbers. The system will not allow you to proceed. All right. The reason that for that is we need to know the detail for each director in order to contact them when there is problems. The directors are responsible for governance of their businesses, not the intermediary. All three of us are equally liable for all responsibilities to this company. And that's why we need it. Right? Next page, Rizzoni. Rizzoni, I think. Uh, one back. There we go. Thank you, Rizzoni. So it's 175 Rand, including your name reservation because it's the short standard. Your memorandum of incorporation or your MI, again, your governance document, your constitution, whatever you want to call it, the official term and the, and the act is uh, MOI, memorandum of incorporation, is attached to your uh, registration certificate. Um, documents will be emailed to all the customer, the customer who submitted the document, as well as all the directors after the registration is completed. You are allowed to download the registration pack again afterwards. Um, that will be your MOI, your registration certificate, your welcoming letter, and electronic web disclosure, which is basically just a summary of all the information that we have received. It is free of charge for the customer who submitted the data to the CIPC, as well as all the active directors, for a 30-day period after registration. 
After that 30-day period, the customer who submitted the documents, as well as the active directors, will be charged a 30 rand fee for the complete pack. Again, there's a reason for it, as Mr. Nkuna Diane has indicated. These type of information is a chargeable fee in terms of our legislation. And also, I'm now going to be quite honest and blunt. Keeping of your documentation is your responsibility as the director. CIPC is not your paper warehouse for information. So you need to get your full confirmations and keep it safe. Uh, Section six, uh, 26 of the Companies Act is quite specific regarding the records that must be kept by the company, which is the directors. It's your responsibility to keep that information. So therefore, after 30 days, there will be a 30 rand fee charge for reissuing of that information in terms of our legislation. Uh, Rizani, next page. All right. Um, again, just if you use new registration is done via the new e-service and using the name reservation, then the name reservation must have been done by new e-service again. Please, we can't, cannot stress this enough at the moment. Uh, we cannot transfer your name from the one platform to the other one in order to be used again. All right. Uh, Rizani, next page. So, again, there's frequently asked questions and a step-by-step -step guide on how to use the service. So, um, from my side, that I am completed. I hope you found it interesting as well as um, just more informative other than just how the process works, but some some legal and governance notes and tips for the for the use of that information. Thank you very much. Over to you, Marumu. Thank you very much, Krista, for a very informative uh, presentation. I'm definitely sure that it really benefited our participants. You touched on additional channels, options that are available, and also the future releases that initiatives that will be done. Thank you very much. Our next uh, presenter is uh, from it's Mr. Mabuse Mweti. Mr. Mabuse Mweti will be talking to the primary uh, cooperatives registration on e-services platform. Over to you, Mr. Mabuse. Thank you very much, Mr. Marumo. And then good morning to colleagues and um, the public at large. I will be going through um, the cooperatives um, in new e-services platform with everyone. And then, as you can see on the slide, um, the structure of my presentation will be dealing with the background of the new e-services platform for cooperatives the rationale behind the e-services platform, the approach, the benefits, and we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. Next slide, please. Okay, um, just to give some background on uh, cooperatives, the Cooperatives Division joined CIPC from the then Department of Agriculture. The processing of cooperatives was manual and when they joined um, the CIPC, we had already begun with automation. The legislative requirements made it difficult to incorporate the cooperatives into our electronic environment. And having said, all of the above, a process of reviewing the legislation took place and it is finalized. Hence, now we have the electronic services for registration of cooperatives. Um, next slide. Okay, the rationale behind the e-services is it will assist with the standardization of services within the CAPC, and it is in line with the, uh, the fourth industrial revolution. It will also reduce the administrative burden of, for the applicants, and then the recording of data and access thereof will be streamlined, and that it will facilitate ease of compliance to the requirements of the Cooperatives Act as amended. 
Can we move on to the next slide? Okay, on the approach, the e-services is not a new matter in the CIPC, though it is new to our division as cooperatives. Therefore, we are upgrading the current e-services for the organization, which is the opportunity for cooperatives to be part of it as well as um, as well, and then hence the new e-services. Um, the processes will run parallel uh, with the old e-services for certain services and the new e-services for certain services, including cooperatives. Um, in line with uh, CAPC's approach of introducing new e-services uh, format, this uh, for cooperatives, it will be done in a phased approach. Phase one, which is currently being uh, implemented, and I'm sure most people are aware that the new registration of cooperatives is done on the new e-services platform. And then the phase two will also incorporate um, the introduction of secondary, tertiary, and apex cooperatives. This will be done within the next six months. And the clients are advised to please uh, keep an eye on the CAPC website with regarding to new um, notices and then the new events that will follow through. Phase three will be on amendments of cooperatives. This will be uh, the amendments of directors, the constitution appointment of independent reviewers and auditors as well as changes to directors. And the last phase, which is phase four, will be based on compliance related uh, matters. That is the submission of uh, annual financial services by cooperatives, the annual returns and so forth. Um, next slide, please. The, uh, the benefits of the new e-services uh, in relation to cooperatives will result in quick turnaround times for our clients. There will be no typing errors from our internal officials or maybe illegible documents. It will also reduce administrative burden of the act. Uh, we will have reliable data on our database and there will be no financial related queries. So as my colleagues have already indicated that it will be a card payment and there will be no declining um, balances. Having said that, with regards to the new primary cooperative registration, the clients must please note that the old cooperatives online email is no longer applicable. It is only used for submission of applications for secondary, tertiary, and apex cooperatives. And then the name reservations, because there's also been queries regarding the name reservations of uh, for cooperatives. The clients must please not use the old e-services for cooperative names, um, but they must use the new services, the new e-services as is from start to end. Um, that is all from me. I will take questions when when the next speaker has finished. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Mabuse, for a very informative uh, presentation. I, I, I must say I'm happy to hear what you mentioned in terms of the benefit to our customers and, and participants in terms of saying this will result in quick turnaround times for a registration of, of uh, co -op primary cooperatives. Our next speaker as per program is Mr. Louis Mella, whom will be talking to our last topic of the day, the cut payment. And I would like participant to take note that uh, during the overview presentation by Mr. Dian Kuna from the ICT, that some of the matters it's more related to his presentation. So it's, it's, it will be talking to each, to each other in terms of those aspects relating to payment. Over to you, Louis, thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Maruma. I would like to welcome all our valued customers. I'll presenting on the card payments on our side. Um, as uh, my colleague Dian Kuna has alluded, that um, we have strived to improve our, our, our service delivery to our customers. And as part, uh, as part of that, we've introduced an online card payment facility. Um, that would we, which will include our name reservations, our co primary cooperatives, and private company registrations. That would be in the phase one of us as well. The card payments solution will allow our customers to uh, to use the facility of their debit and their credit cards as a means of payment, and also the. The, the, the card payments does not affect the current transactional processes that allows customers to, tran to, to deposit funds into their, into their accounts and start transacting with those funds. Um, the new e-service uh, payment will be as a pay-as-you-go. It will be it's convenient and it's cost-effective, and it's a secure uh, way of doing business. And also it allows the customers to sit in the comfort of their home transacting with CIPC. It will, the, the, the card facility will also allow our customers to el eliminate the unnecessary delay of a payment and the service completion of a transaction, meaning in some instances, the customers needs to wait because the, some of the payments is not allocated to the account and therefore the transaction cannot be processed. Now, by using the card facility, it means that the transactions will be one-to-one -one when you register the company and you pay simultaneously for that services. It is a complete service as it. Uh, the benefits for that one is really that it's improving real-time service delivery for customers. Um, it allows them miss or unallocated specifically for calling in, logging in inquiry, calling again for CIPC. It, it's just more convenient using the card. And as we said before, it, it's a pay as you go. The transaction is secured, meaning you have control over the, your card and also the amount you would spend or transact on that specific card. Currently, the, the card is it's a debit and a, a, a credit card. And also the transaction, the transaction is instantaneously. There's no delays. So nobody would have any effect of going forward when you do a transaction with us. You would know once you started the process, you pay for the transaction, and the transaction would therefore be concluded later onwards. Um, what to remember is important. As my, my colleague Dian and Kunal already alluded, it says we will only accept 3D enabled card, meaning that you should contact your bank, inform your bank that you will be transacting with us and that they should set up the facility of the 3D Secure, 3D Secure to enable you to transact with CIPC. And also what is very important is that we have terms and conditions on our website. We ask our customers please to read those terms and conditions before start before they start processing, uh, before they start using the card facility to enable them to understand the, the 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 terms and conditions and also the dispute resolution around in those transactions should it arise. Currently, we'll only accept Visa and Mastercards. We will not accept Diners or American Express at this stage. Uh, um, uh, but looking uh, uh, ahead, we might look at it. But for now, just remember, it will be only Master and Visa cards. Um, our primary transactional based transactions would be ultimately phased out in the future as we continue with them. The most important thing for us, our customers would like to know what would happen if they if they have balances with CIPC. Now, the balances that exist for, for the customers, the customers will be able to be refunded those amounts. So you will allow, you will be allowed um, only on our e-services to transact, on the new e-services to transact via card payment. And should you wish to trans and no longer transact on other platforms, then you are, we, we will be allowing you to re, we will refund you the amounts due to the customer as well. Um, uh, uh, the frequently asked questions we have normally on our website that we have a lost on them, it's how long does it take for the payment to reflect, 
it's instantaneously as we said before it says can i pay for other service currently in phase one you'll only be allowed to do a name reservation cooperative and a private company as the registration for the first phase so note those ones as well and very important is that in the coming months crpc will be closing down the depository system meaning as we progress we will the card payment on the new e-services will add more services uh, more offerings to our services which will also be only driven by card payments as yet so we would encourage customers that have balances at cipc start using those balances and start um, start using those balances for the services and also to get used to using the new e-services by the means of card payments as well and also we would like to inform our customers not to deposit any bulk amounts going forward and start and make use of the credit card facilities at the cipc um, for our refund process as i alluded before um, if people would not no longer wish to transact with us they are more than welcome to uh, submit their request uh, with uh, by logging in inquiry on our website which will follow the following documentations a copy of an id document of the customer the proof of payment the banking details of the customer and also a letter requesting the, the refund and also for us to understand the purpose of the refund um, why did people why, why why was the money deposited in the first place and also to evaluate our service delivery that says could we not render certain services or was it just that somebody made a bulk amount to make it ease of doing business with us so in a nutshell for us to remember is that we will be accepting card payments uh, uh, debit and credit cards we will not be accepting diners in american express cards and for now in the first phase we will only accept uh, the card payments on the new e-services for primary cooperatives name reservations and for companies at this stage i thank you for these ones any questions you, sh you should uh, post them for us and thanks a lot Maruma. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Louis Mella. Very clear, practical, and solution driven presentation whereby you were able to share with our participants in terms of uh, that one can still apply for, for, or for, for refund, and also the fact that uh, you, 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 you were very clear in terms of. Uh, the new mechanism in terms of how can people uh, continue to transact with CIPC in terms of payment. Uh, that All that being said, uh, participants, my colleagues, we have uh, come to the end. The last uh, matter that we'll be dealing with now will be handling the questions and, and, and answers uh, for, for various um, uh, participants because who spoke to to, the, to our participants we at CIPC we very much uh, uh, hopeful that uh, uh, you have really uh, got some value out of our engagement Rosani we can now proceed to the last item which is uh, questions and answers I started it okay, uh, okay, thanks, Marum. Yeah, we are ready for with the questions. Um, are all the presenters back? Dian, are you back? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. We, we, we're gonna um uh, put questions on the screen randomly. So, um, uh, okay, this one is uh, it's not related to us text clearance. Um. Let's go to another question. Rosa, um, there's a question about real-time payment. Is convenient? No more challenges with the misallocation of Okay, this is a comment from CPC. 
uh, break into that. So if you pay and register, how long does it uh, uh, take you? It's, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to get a document within uh, five minutes, basically. Okay, and there's a question from Tepisa Phillips. So does that mean does, we will no longer... mean we will no longer deposit money directly into the CIPC account? So I think that's, Louis can respond to that. Um, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, for us, is that says, as Dion alluded, that the transaction will be uh, concluded first time. Uh, that currently in the phase one, we will still allow customers uh, transactions on the normal transactional base, as we said in the presentation. So customers for other services, rather than the new services, will customers be allowed still to deposit. But we would encourage them to move away from those services and start using our new offerings as yet. Only for services that is not available for them, they will still be allowed to use the transactional based services. Thank you. Thank you. And um, the next question, I think Diana should answer this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. I hope I will still you be still be using my old login details, or is it totally new? I have to register. Yes, you have to register. So um, the process is pretty straightforward. You go to a landing page, you give us your ID number, and therefore just follow the steps. There, the system guides you on what you need to do. And if you need to update your email address, we'll update it. If it's still valid, it will be presented to you. Therefore, you log in using your old password. So the only thing that changes is the login username, which will be this time the email address instead of the customer code. But the password remains the same. Thanks. Thank you. And there's another one from Rosemary. Uh, you have used the new e-services to register, but you have not received any documents. So, Rosemary, if you can forward your reference number, the reference number that you, you have, or your customer, um, your ID number, either ID number, customer code, or reference number, any of the email address, uh, give us your email address or reference number, or customer code. Therefore, I'll be able to track what is going on with your application. Thank you. I think Krista should answer this one. <laughs> we are uh, we are playing bit of musical chairs, it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so special characters. We have introduced over the last couple of years some special characters, but not all. The main reason why is the a lot of these special characters actually has got um, coding uh, code meanings when you do code of software. So a lot of the banks and the bigger organizations like such, when you have a like a forward slash, it's got a coding meaning. So when the client put it in, you are going to mess around with the system algorithms and rules. So certain of the special characters has been introduced over time. Brackets we have, um, um, hyphen we have. So it is on our strategic plan for to investigate the introduction of more special characters over the next couple of years. But as I stated, a lot of databases for bigger users like the banks and such will have to be looked at in order not to cause data uh, problems and rule application rule challenges as they are introduced. Okay. And then um, we've got another one from Brady. I think Krista can also attend to it. I have registered a company, but it's not yet operating. So I want to change company name. How much and how do I change it? All right. So uh, company name change. You can change your company name at any given point in time. It is an. Uh, it's, a, it's called a change to an MOI. We have an automated function for it on our website. But just because it's automated does not mean you do not have to uh, comply with the legal requirements that the law requires. So 
A company name change is a resolution that needs to be done by the company. Um, I think it's section 36, if I just, or, or, or section 19 of the Companies Act. It's a, a special resolution process where both the directors needs to decide on it. And then you can submit your name reservation and then you submit that with a documentation to CIPCVR platform. The platform is quite intuitive in the fact that it states, have you done this? Have you done that? Keep your records. Um, it is 50 Rand for the name reservation. And then if your name is the registration number, you don't pay the 250 MOI fee. If your company has got a full name, like Krista Clark Incorporated, for example, then you will also pay an additional 250 rand in terms of the ad. But please go to our main CIPC website. The steps on what to follow is actually clearly available under maintain, uh, maintain your business. Thank you. Um, hey, Krista. Anna. Yes, uh, I've oh, got no one. Dian, you are on. Okay, I'll mute you. Um, I've got one for cooperatives. Now, was it? Okay. Um. Uh, then Songo says he's amended a cooperative by removing a director, and the bank wants an old constitution and the new to open an account. Remember um, when the, the constitution was signed by either founder members or board of directors. So once the changes are effected, it simply means one director is no longer on the document. So what you are advised to do is normally amend the entire constitution, basically replace it by um, taking a special resolution and submitting your documents to CIPC there's a step-by-step -step guide on the website under cooperatives on what to do and then how to do it because we're still using the old um, e-services. You have to uh, submit your new constitution with, together with payment and special resolution form to cooperatives online. Okay, thank you, Mahwusem. Okay, I think we've done the all the questions. Let me see. Okay. Okay, this is just um okay, just a compliment. Thank you for this live. Are your payment options are reliable? Especially the latest one. Maybe we can talk to that. Um, thank you, Rajani. It is reliable because you will be verified, as Dion indicated in this presentation. Um, you will have, there is a verification on it. So once you use your credit card, the OTP pin will be sent to you as the individual of the card holder as such. So therefore, you have control over the card and also on how you utilize the card. So it is reliable. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got another one from Moyahawa. I have two directors who have resigned. I like your request online now. I need to submit the ID copies. They are not cooperating. How do I go about removing them from the company? Krista? All right. Um, my apologies now. Uh, you Please log a ticket on the CIPC website, uh, category companies and class corporation, company amendments, directorship changes. Uh, the directorship unit will have more detail on how to overcome this challenge and what is required. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't fall within the company's area, so I'm not 100% sure, and I don't want to give the wrong advice. I hope that's in order. Okay, thank you very much. I um, think we've done all, we've dealt with all the questions. Unless if there's somebody who wants to talk to us, you can raise your hand from the audiences. We can invite you to the studio to talk. Uh, but um, other than that, back to Alma. Th thank you very much. The I would like to use this opportunity to thank the participants uh, for engagement in terms of the questions and answers. However, allow me perhaps to touch on the first question, which I believe we did not respond to. A customer raised a question relating to the reality that should once upon registration of a company, how can he or she obtain a, a clearance certificate? 
And the response is that that CIPC, it's not within our domain. However, we advise you to go to SAS website and the call center, they will be able to assist you with regard to obtaining a clearance certificate. I also want to take this opportunity to thank all the speakers, the support technical team, Rjani, and also to say thank you very much to our participants. And we very much hope that the uh, SCIPC, uh, you have enjoyed or gained more information regarding uh, this newly implemented e-services. And also to notify you that we will continue having this join uh, future webinars. And please feel free to join us as we embark, as the Commissioner of CIPC Advocate Rory Fowler always say, continue to improve service. We will continue to make sure that you are updated and have the necessary information that you require. On that note, I would um, close the, the, the webinar. I thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.